Hello and uh, welcome to lecture 11 in uh, Mathematics 2. So we are going to continue um, working with first order differential equations. So after the previous lectures where we, we saw first order differential equations and we saw how to solve linear and separable um, first order differential equations. Now we are going to look at kind of well other types of uh, situations where first order differential equations arise and can be solved. Now, um, well, even though I said that we are working with first order differential equations, sometimes uh, we can apply the, this knowledge to solve uh, second order differential equations. Right? So what is a second order differential equation? A second order differential equation is a differential equation in uh, variables d, well, uh, y and x, where x is the independent variable and y is the dependent variable. And it is something that involves the second derivative, something like d, dy, x, dx twice. And probably, so it, it may involve the independent variable, some, well, uh, I'll just come up with some, some random example of a second order differential equation. So something like equals cosine x times, I don't know, y squared, something like this, right? So this is a second order differential equation. Now, uh, in uh, certain situations, a second order differential equation um, can be reduced to a first order differential equation. And th th this is what we're going to do today, right? Uh, there are also um, certain types of second order differential equations that can be solved, but uh, the theory is kind of, it, it is not really anything that you saw in first order differential equation is something completely different. So those types of second order differential equations are going to appear in, in the next lecture, right? So but today we're going to work with um, basically uh, two kind of types of situations. Uh, so one is uh, when we have a second order differential equation. So it has uh, the second derivative, it has the first derivative, it has the independent variable x, but it does not have y explicitly right so something like this so if you look at the fir first example or the, the second example so x appears there y appears there and y sorry y prime appears and y double prime appears but y on its own does not appear okay so in uh, this situation what you can really do you can treat it as a first order differential equation in y prime and you can solve for y prime right so you can think of um y prime as being a new variable right and you just denote it by some some other uh notation like like z uh, if it is more convenient to you i i think it's more, more convenient to introduce something like z and then if z is y prime then z prime is going to be y double prime right and since y does not appear there so if you replace y prime with z and y double prime with z prime then you will essentially get a first order differential equation. So here is an example, right? So what I'm going to do, uh, notice that y on its own does not appear here. So that there is y uh, double prime and y prime, right? And if I uh, write it uh, y prime, which is, well, dy dx. And if I denote this by z, then z prime is going to be the derivative of y prime, which is, well, the, the second derivative of, of y, right? Uh, so by doing this, I am essentially replacing uh, my, um, well, changing my differential equation to a first order because the left-hand side is now z prime, and this thing here is, is really just, just z, right? And what I'm going to get is, z prime uh, equals 1 over x times uh, z plus cosine square, sorry, cosine uh, x square times cosine x. Okay, um, so what is this? This is uh, really just a linear differential equation. So I can move um, z over x uh, over to the left-hand side. And doing this, I will get z prime minus 1 over x times z equals 
1 over x times x squared times cosine x. Well, um, 1 over x times x squared is just, just x. Uh, now I need to find the integrating factor. So integrating to find the integrating factor, I take e to the power, the integral of this, right? So let me write it here. So the integrating factor is e raised to the integral of 1 of minus 1 over x dx. So the integral of uh, 1 over x is logarithm x. So it is e raised to the minus ln x. which is essentially 1 divided by e raised to the ln x. And e raised to the ln x is, is just x. It's the, basically it's the definition of ln, right? So this is 1 over x. Okay, so the integration factor is 1 over x. Now, to solve a linear differential equation, we need to multiply by the integration factor. And we know from theory, although it, it's not hard to actually calculate, but uh, it's just probably uh, more straightforward, and, and shorter to just just try the answer that that we are going to get uh, one over x times which is the integrating factor times z prime and this is going to be what is going to be so we need to multiply this this whole thing by one over x right and multiplying x and one over x we will just just get one it cancels out so this is just cosine x okay. So I, I think I'll just uh, do it uh, on the next slide. So what I got is one over x times z, the derivative. This is uh, cosine x, I believe. Yeah. Cosine x, right? So the derivative of the function one over x times z is cosine x, which means that one over x times z itself is going to be the antiderivative of cosine x. And the antiderivative of cosine x is, uh, I believe, sine x plus some constant. Uh, anticipating uh, the, the fact that, that there's going to be another integration, since we are working with a second order differential equation, so which essentially means that, that there's going to be two constants later. So I, I will just change this, this to c1 rather than just, just leaving it as c. Okay, uh, now solving for z, which means multiplying this whole thing by x, I will get z itself is going to be x sine x plus c1x. Okay, but recall that z was introduced initially as, as y prime. Right, so y prime is, is this thing. Oh, so which means that y itself is going to be the antiderivative of this. Right, so y is going to be the antiderivative of x sine x plus c1x. Dx. Okay, so let, let me do this integral. So this x times uh, sine x, uh, we do it by parts. Um, to do it by parts, I need to differentiate uh, si x and I need to integrate sine x. Okay, so let me do that. The So first I just keep x times the antiderivative of sine x is, the antiderivative of sine x is minus cos x minus cos x minus the integral of differentiation of x, which is 1, times antiderivative of sine x is minus cos x dx plus, uh, well, now I will integrate c1x with respect to x, and doing that I will get c1 times x squared over 2, and I guess I can just write a plus constant here now, or I can write plus another constant later. It doesn't matter, so let me just write it now. Okay, uh, now the remaining thing is just to, to what is, is basically to, to get rid of the, this one. And there is minus and minus. I'm going to cancel out the two minus signs. So this is going to be minus x times cosine x plus the antiderivative of cosine x, which is sine x plus c1 times x squared over 2 plus c2. And that's the answer. So notice that since the original differential equation was second order, it means that in the end, 
uh, its general solution is going to have two different constants. And so th there's going to be two degrees of freedom. The reason for that is because basically differentiate twice means that to, to solve it, we have to integrate twice. And each time we integrate, we, we get plus constant. Okay, so here is the same thing, and here is the official model answer, and uh, that's the end. Um, that, that's how we deal with um, second-order differential equations they, that do not have y.